Hello everyone and welcome back to some Space Engineers. It's been a little while since we played the game and uh, I want to kind of start fresh, go into the vanilla base game and go ahead and form a fleet. So we're going to start with a kind of atmospheric scout ship. It will have a little bit of a defensive capability and um, hopefully pretty agile and we're going to try some different things a little bit later on as well that I hope you will find a little bit more unique but uh, starting off we're going to have a little bit of cargo right we want this thing to be able to carry a little bit of stuff with us whether that's you know some oxygen if we go up in the upper atmosphere or some uh, hydrogen even though it doesn't have hydrogen thrusters so that's a dumb statement <coughs> um, it's going to be mostly battery powered um, it will also have a turret on the top level here and you can see trying to get this spaced up so that the conveyors all connect together so that um, they function and provide a good source of ammunition up to that turret we're gonna have two batteries on each side here on the left and the right and if you guys have ever played like say start a citizen um, you're gonna probably recognize a little bit of the armor shaping. It's probably gonna look a little bit like the Aurora, which is uh, pretty cool. Um, maybe a little bit more of a sleek version of it than the base kind of spaceship version. Um, but yeah, at this point, the internals always lay out the internals uh, kind of quick um, and functional and then you go through and start armoring this thing up and you know i try to put my armor in such a fashion that it can um, both look good and cover up most of the um, internals of the ship right because you don't want just a solid piece of armor it's going to look a little jakey if you do probably something like that you're gonna run into an issue of it just looks like a chunk of metal or a box and that's not something we want so it's very important to try and get some things exposed um, such as maybe a little bit of the batteries or a little bit of the cargo crate um, it's gonna mix up your textures a good bit and just overall provide a decent kind of color balance as well right because the detailing on say that connector piece kind of showing through not only can you use that to access the inventory but it adds just a little bit of uh, extra detail on there that's kind of like the big thing about space engineers that um, i still kind of grapple with to this day and even in medieval engineers is that they do have a grid system um and it's not really great for adding little texture details. And to me, sci-fi is a lot about the texturing and the material composition. And if you can't quite get that feeling right, it just doesn't look like it belongs in sci-fi. So we're gonna be trying for that. It doesn't always work out, but uh, you know, using trying, trying to get some ribbing going, right? exposing a little bit of the battery enough just to show how charged it is because that's useful information from the outside uh, you know you don't want to walk up to your spacecraft and then realize oh well it has no charge uh, that doesn't really do anything for you you know trying to put in some winglets of some kind so that it provides some look of lift um, we're not using you know any mod for like atmospheric lift or anything like that though I think at this point it should be in the base game because something like that is very important like having lifting bodies I think it would kind of alleviate the need for so many thrusters um, just because like if you think about it like an f-22 Raptor isn't that big of a plane um, and it flies perfectly well with just its two engines it's not got, it doesn't need an engine in every direction just to fly around um, it's got lift it's, it can turn using atmosphere and drag and it it's kind of a something that's sorely missing from space engineers or at least at this point I feel like it's missing I, you know everyone has kind of their own opinion about it I'm sure and then I'm sure there's gonna be some 
technical issues involving maybe some latency, lag issues, or physics issues, if you start introducing drag on a massive scale, especially with the multiplayer, but you know, I, I, it's just something that I kind of want to see at this point in the game development. Here, putting some you know thrusters down below, trying to keep the venting exposed because you want to make it look like it's actually going to be able to pull air through the ship. Um, that's another kind of good design theory to do. Um, as of right now, it's relatively in the right shape. Um, it's a little, you know, heavy in the back end, so we're going to be reworking this. We don't have any side thrusters yet, so we had to kind of fix that, um, get this spacing kind of redone, and uh, maybe just use some half blocks here just for some spacers as well, just to provide a little bit extra armor, but also provide a little bit of a... Um, a visible element of being able to see through the craft um, seeing different layers from different angles is pretty cool in fact the next build that we do um, I don't know if I quite fully succeed at that design theory but these craft are supposed to be kind of part of a set so um, the next one we build you'll, you'll see some some influences from this one into it as well gonna try and get some vertical things along the engines a little bit just to break up the winglet make it look like it kind of attaches up but then keep the engine mostly exposed uh, expand out the winglet as well just so it looks like it can pull a little bit more lift not too much more with on here i don't want this to be a very wide angled craft um, i want a very sleek profile um, one makes it harder to hit right from gunfire and then two it also makes it lighter so that we hopefully can get away with some less thrusters. Um, thrusters tend to be very bulky, as I said. Um, to me, they're one of the hardest things to build around in the game, but uh, to each their own, I suppose. Some people will just go full utilitarian, go really powerful ship that can kind of be big and bulky. And uh, I prefer some, something a little bit more compact. I definitely seem to fancy a little bit more of a looks uh, design over function kind of, kind of uh, problem solving for me. Um, I still try and make all my ships pretty functional as I start to kind of crash it into the ground in some test flights. <laughs> you know, these are, these are kind of the important steps, realizing that, you know, these six downward facing engines aren't quite enough so we're going to try and replace that with just one single large atmospheric thruster it takes up about the same amount of room um, adds a little bit more detail right because we can get away with leaving some of that exposed um, you know that the exposed kind of ribbing there um, and then adding two little thrusters in the back just to help balance that out just a little bit more, right? You don't want this thing to come down. When you're landing, you want it to be a soft kind of just touchdown. You want a lot of control with landing. These vehicles and space engineers, they tend to explode. We're also trying to run this in a very energy efficient manner, right? So we just have the two batteries. We do have one reactor in the back, just in case you run out of battery power, you can throw some fuel in the reactor and uh, get it going again, right? And it's also going to provide just a little bit more energy for the engines. Going to try and balance out the landing gear and stuff. And in fact, we're going to end up changing the landing gear. Um, a big thing that we want to try on this craft is get a landing gear that uses wheels. Um, I don't see that very often in Space Engineers, right? Most of, most of these craft will generally use um, landing gears, which is kind of... The default is what you would kind of expect out of this game at this point. Um, but here, you, you're just, I'm just curious. I don't know how it's going to look. Uh, the land, you know, wheels are generally bu uh, buggy and a little bulky for um, space engineers. They never quite work the way you want. Um, and since I'm not going to add rotors to any of these builds because rotors I find to be more hassle than they're worth using a lot of the time, uh, you know, we're going to try and just have some wheels. And, you know, they're, they're going to take some getting used to. Um, you have to really come down, uh, get, get really close to the ground. You're going to be going as fast as you want to be, 
uh, in a horizontal manner, but vertical speed has to be pretty low um, in terms of that. Not much more than a few meters per second, which is perfectly fine. Uh, another advantage, by the way, for having wheels on a spacecraft like this is that if you have it in a hangar, you can roll it around. You don't have to fly it. Um, you can actually have a proper hangar. You can go ahead and just let it bounce on the ground, kind of like that, and explode. But you can actually kind of get some multiple people kind of lining up like they're on a runway um, or a taxiway more specifically. And so you know, start getting some flight patterns. At least that's kind of what I'm going for. I don't know, it's up to you guys if something like this succeeds or fails overall. And uh, you know, eventually this plan will be on the workshop with the rest of the ships that we make. So keep an eye on that. My Steam Workshop was where pretty much any of these things are gonna appear. Um, hopefully you, um, you guys like these series. If you guys want to stick around, we're probably going to hop into real time as well, where I'll go over some of the other key parts about the ship. We'll fly it around. Um, I'll go over some other minor details about it. Probably rehash a lot of what I said so far in the speed build for, you know, the part of the episode, if I can actually speak. And uh, yeah, here we go. All right, so here we are with the finished uh, LS. X11, that's kind of what I'm calling this. You know, those fancy dancy um, shortened versions for space vehicle names. And uh, it's going to be uh, an interesting ride. Uh, it's a little floaty, but it's kind of supposed to be, right? It's kind of a cheap, light scout ship, hence the LS in its name. Um, it's a single cockpit um, scout vessel. It does have a Gatling turret on top for self-defense as it is hopefully fleeing <laughs> in your sort of combat it sees. It's also good for, of course, anti-missile defense as well. It's not like this thing has shields. Um, again, this series is going to be a little bit more focused on vanilla and what you can potentially do with vanilla ships. Uh, mods and things are uh, something to use to expand, you know, your capacity. Um, but not everyone enjoys downloading a whole bunch of mods just to make a plane works so that's why this whole series is going to be what you can do with vanilla pretty sleek design i think it's um pretty compact it does have a little bit of storage as you guys know um it's pretty agile once it gets going gets up to max speed pretty quickly but again it's floaty so it's going to behave probably a little bit more like a standard plane so you're going to be banking a lot to kind of counteract that it doesn't have a whole lot of braking thrust it's not overly maneuverable it's definitely for more of a flyby approach in terms of any sort of combat that it would see and uh, we got a nice little ore detector on the front our little landing gears which are little cute little things um, again went with these instead of the standing standard landing kind of legs um, just to try something different it's kind of up to you guys if we keep it or not or you know you guys are free to download this and swap it out as you see fit uh, I turned on the strobe lights we have a few white strobes going uh, a red on the left wing and a green on the right wing we have some landing lights underneath as well and on the front here just so you can hopefully see the ground at night time I added a few extra small reactors um, it will have a standard small reactor in the back that you can access and this is generally what you're going to need to get it started the first time right because it does have two power cells but until you can get this thing charged um, you might be pushing it around using the reactors initially it does pretty much go to 100% power usage, not much extra room in there, but that's perfectly fine. It's just a light transport scouting ship, so uh, don't need any sort of excess when it comes to power. Now the connector at the bottom will be used. Um, if you land this thing and roll over, say, wherever your hangar is, it can connect to just a ground connection. You can put more you know, fuel into it, um, and also ammunition and maybe some light cargo to transport. So all in all, I think it's a pretty successful little craft. Pretty sleek in design. Uh, for those of you who play Star Citizen, um, I referenced maybe a little bit of the, I believe, Aurora 
with the winglets out back here. Not, you know, an exact copy of how it gets laid out, but I like the um, just light armor over the engine bays. We have a um, nice symmetrical kind of setup for the proportion. Um, we got two strong engines. You know, this is providing most of our thrust forward, just enough engine power to keep us aloft when we are uh, maneuvering in the air. Two gyros, just so the thing kind of maneuvers relatively quickly. And that is pretty much all the features on this. As we go through the series and make other variants of vehicles, whether that's air, uh, atmospheric space, or ground, we will hopefully make them a little bit more complex and interesting as we go. And of course, using your guys' comments as the final say. So let's go ahead and show you guys how this thing flies and maneuvers. You'll notice that um, if you press one, it's gonna turn off your thrusters. It's kind of important to maneuver like this when you are going say on a landing pad or you just wanna change directions on the ground. Um, you can have the thrusters on. It does increase your speed quite a lot on the ground here, but you can see it's a little unstable when it starts going a little too quickly on a surface. Okay, we got two, which I believe turns off the strobes. Three turns off the landing lights. So we're gonna keep the strobes on. Landing lights aren't really required at this stage. We'll hop into the cockpit. I'm gonna turn the UI on. When you take off, you wanna turn on your inertia dampeners. It's gonna help a lot. Turn on your thrust, point the direction you wanna go, and just take off like a plane. You can just pull up gently using the gyroscopes, it'll lift off. The wheels are really nice for that. It's a nice rolling start so you can get up to speed. And then you can just kind of cruise around once you're up here. So you can see we are using about 100% power, but we're not losing any altitude because of it. And as soon as you let go of the thrust, it's gonna just kind of glide anyways. And so you can see what I mean by it. it's a little floaty, it's a little drifty, but that this is, this is what I really uh, want out of my atmospheric uh, ships in Space Engineers. To land, it's a little bit, a little bit of a trickier process. You can, of course, land this like a standard spaceship. You know, come to a stop, hover, and touch down like a VTOL. Um, but I find it more entertaining to try and land her like a plane. Um, best thing to do is, of course, line up with your target. We'll say over this way. Start going down. And you can see, I can just let go of the throttle for the most part, come down at a good angle, and it should touch down about six or seven meters here. And when you get close enough, you can actually just turn off the thrusters and you'll plop down and kind of roll across. You can get some more beautiful landings if you practice with it. Again, it's, a, it's, it's um, one of those things you risk kind of blowing up if you go a little too quickly uh, aground. In fact, we'll kind of try that now. You probably saw that a little bit during the speed build section of this when I was kind of test flying this. So we're, we'll, we'll try and just kind of touch down at almost max speed here. So you can see we bounced. So turn off inertia dampeners when you land. You can see you can kind of roll to a stop. High speeds, it's a little bit of a bumpy ride, but uh, it will take it just fine. And now we'll turn off the thrusters and you come to a stop pretty naturally, just like that. So if you guys enjoyed this episode of Space Engineers and you wanna see more, definitely subscribe for more creative goodness such as this. Uh, hit that like button, leave a comment down below and maybe what you wanna see built next on the channel. Um, of course, um, we might maybe someday turn back on some sort of community servers or space engineers if people are interested but uh, um, for now that's kind of on the uh, back burner I would say just because we're kind of easing back into 2019 here anyways thanks for watching and I will see you in the next episode